Hello guys, it's Sandra from Inspired Keys with another YouTube live video and if you have already liked my Facebook page, you're in the Inspired Keys community Facebook group or maybe you're in the email list, you would have gotten my announcement that I'm coming alive right now to teach about altar call playing tips and so I will be talking about topics like what is an altar call, what are some things that I recommend when it comes to playing, uh, what kind of speed to play, what instruments to use, and what are some do's and don'ts. And if you have no clue what to play for altar call, maybe you guys didn't have a, a set song that you want to do, then stay tuned because I have four chord progressions that I recommend. These are some personal favorites of mine that you could use for your church whenever you guys do an altar call. So stay tuned if you want to learn all of that. First up, I like to reward anyone who is watching live, okay? So if you're firstly, if you're watching live, I really want to welcome you to this video and please take a second to type into the chat. Let us know your name and the country that you're from. And also feel free to ask any questions because that is the whole value of a YouTube live video. It is really like a, a live lesson really. And if you have any questions after my teaching, I'm gonna scroll through the chat and I will answer your questions as we go. And um, if you are watching the replay because you couldn't catch it live, then you can leave the comments, questions in the comment section below as well and I will get back to you, but I can only get back to you later and not instantly. And also if you, um, because you're a live attendee guys, the perk that I'm about to share that's only for people who watch the video and people who watch the video um, very soon after the replay is I am running a brand new discount that is um, something that you, <laughs> I haven't announced anywhere else and it's only going to last today and tomorrow. So just this weekend guys. So Saturday the 12th of May, which is right now till tomorrow the 13th, we are going to, I am going to throw a hundred dollars off discount for the annual membership of the Inspired Keys Academy. So the discount code is 199 and once you key that into the annual membership, you will get a hundred dollars off, not just for this year, but for all the years that you're subscribed. So your price will never be raised, you are locked in. The original price guys is 299 and what you get inside the Inspired Keys Academy includes so many awesome things to learn, worship keys, and go up to the next level guys. It includes accessing all of my teaching videos. Um, you can book me for one-on-one -on -one lessons. You can share your recordings to get critique and feedback and so much more. So check that out below. It's all in the link at inspiredkeys.com slash join to find out what you can get inside the academy. And do not miss this two-day only discount code and the discount, sorry, the discount code is not 199, guys. I just remembered. That was from last week. This weekend's discount code is Alter Call. Okay, so that is A L T A R C A L L. One more time, the discount code is A L T A R C A L L. And that is all one word. So, links below. Uh, discount code will be in the discount uh, in the description box below as well. Now, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the Inspired Keyboardist YouTube channel and also hit the bell button next to it so that you can get notified every time I come on live. And stay tuned because all of next week I will be sharing lots of stuff on different days on different worship keys topics. So if you have questions, be sure to ask it below. But my priority for answering them goes to Inspired Keys Academy members. Um, for creating videos uh, based on the content that you want to learn. All right, guys, let's get started today. The topic is altar call playing tips for worship keys. So well, firstly, let's talk about what is an altar call. An altar call is a very, very sort of, I guess you can say a very special and sacred moment where it typically happens towards the end of a worship service or, um, and usually also after a sermon. 
so once you hear the person, the preacher preach, um, it's a time for people to respond to God. And so it could be that um, you could come to the front of the, the stage um, and receive prayer. You could come to the front to receive prayer. Jesus into your life for the first time uh, or sometimes altar calls might even just take place in your own seats wherever you are uh, seated in the auditorium because maybe sometimes it's just a lot of response and there's not necessarily space in the front for you to come to but it's a, a very special moment that's usually very sensitive because spiritually lots is happening people are responding to God and you know the personality of God is when anyone opens up their heart to him God just rushes in and things might happen spiritual stuff happen and it's really awesome and it's a moment that you definitely don't want to destroy when it comes to music and I think as this priestly this priesthood that we have as musicians is that we need to make sure that we are equipped musically so that we can create the most worshipful atmosphere musically and then God will use that to add spiritual impact to whatever it is he's doing in our gatherings. Okay, so that is altar call. I'm going to go straight on into some tips. So first up, I highly suggest that the tempo, which means the speed, is slow. The thing is you do not want to have an upbeat song at this moment because it's a very quiet, meditative, inward and um, got an upward looking moment and you definitely don't want to spoil the moment with something a bit too jumpy. Um, upbeat songs have their place, they're more for like uh, welcoming people into a room, getting you hyped up for the rest of the service, or maybe getting you hyped up for the rest of the day when the service ends at the very last part, but not so much at the altar call moment. So keep the tempo nice and slow. And for the, the demonstrations I show you later, they're all gonna be nice and slow so you can have an idea what it's like. Now the second tip I have is we should try to play in a way that minimizes distractions. Now, by the way, everything that I share is in a handout that usually is only available inside the Inspired Keys Academy, but for this particular teaching, I'm making it available for you. So if you want to get that, go to inspiredkeys.com slash altar call. And the link is also below. Okay, so let's see. Minimize distractions in a few ways. So first up, uh, when it comes to instrument choice, a very typical choice is pads. And that, that's no surprise, guys. The reason why we want to have pads... Okay, so right now I have got piano and pad set up. So when you have pads... And I'm just going to set my main stage so that I only have the pad going. So this is... Okay, so this is what I do with my my worship setting, I've got, this is the piano only, this is the pad only, and I've got them set on different sliders. So at the moment, if I were to just only turn up the pad, then you will only hear the pad sound. Okay, now the thing about pads is that it's, it's awesome when it comes to a very worshipful atmosphere, especially if you have a really warm sounding pad. Um, so sometimes you just want to play through all the pads that you have. But um, here I've got a pad that's really nice and worshipful. Um, it's a very simple pad. I didn't really tweak very much from it. And I'm using the Worship Essentials main stage template. And um, what What's awesome about pads, guys, is that there is hardly any attack to it. You see, you want to compare that with the piano sound. If I were to play the piano, if you think about the mechanism of a piano, it's actually the action of a hammer hitting a string. So every single strike on the piano key is a tap sound, which also means that there is quite a strong attack to it. And so when you want to create a very worshipful and warm atmosphere, Pads are awesome because when I play pads, right, not like I'll play it that way, but you can hear that there's like hardly any attack to it and it sustains very well. So it's a great choice. Make sure to find a keyboard that has a good pad sound. And if you can, try and find something that allows piano and pad because sometimes when you play pads for too long, it could I mean, 
mean, most of the time it works well, like... Yeah, it's all, it's all good there, but if you have to play pad for a really long time, I feel like it's going to get mundane, okay? So what I would personally like is to be able to sneak up the piano when you want it because then it allows you to have a, a bit of a musical interjection that makes the music more interesting as we go, okay? So here I am, I'm going to use a chord progression and today the chord progression I have picked is a one, four, one B and four. So that's actually progression three that I will be sharing later. Uh, one, four, one B is one first inversion and then chord four again, and then I'm gonna repeat that. So if I were to just play that progression just one time with the pads. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. So what's important guys, is you want to have a sense of pulse as you play. Don't like be random about it, like chord one, play it for like five counts and then chord four, play it for seven counts because then that just doesn't sound cohesive. So usually when I would play in altar calls and if I was a solo pianist and there's no real song, it's just me creating a worshipful atmosphere, I'll want to try and keep to a certain pulse. And so when I set those numbers, the beat numbers out, I wanted to demonstrate to you what's going on in my brain. I'm actually having the counting going on. And sometimes if I'm playing with other members in the band, I might nod my head like this, so my, everyone knows where I am in the music. And here's where I feel like I'm going to have to turn up the piano. you heard for yourself the value of the piano when the piano came up it was able to offer like these attacks um, as a form of musical interjection just to add musical interest to what is otherwise just pads and pads and pads it, it might sound very mundane especially if you've gone on for like 10 minutes on just pads it can get a little bit mundane guys so if you have a very long altar call I think having the piano just makes it musically and instrumentally more interesting um, I guess the word is instrumentation. Yeah, so it makes the instrumentation a little bit more interesting and you can add more musical ideas uh, that, that push the music along instead of having more, it, it, making it just sound too, too bland and too monotonous, which sometimes people might fall asleep to. So we don't want that. Um, and let's go on to see the next point I want to mention about minimal distractions and that is to keep your voicings quite constant. Okay, so when it comes to voicings and I have uh, I teach about that inside the Inspired Keys Academy, an entire course about voicings. It's all about the way you play your chords, right? So for example, you could play chord one like this and you could play chord one like this. So th th these are all the same chords, uh, but played with different voicings. So when you use your voicing, it, it really makes, makes or breaks the music, makes or breaks the worship moment. And I'm suggesting that when we use play in auto call, you don't want to have voicings that jump around. In fact, it's kind of like a general universal rule. Don't ever play voicings that jump around because that just doesn't even sound very good. So for example, I would suggest playing and then a four. So can you see that my right hand's pretty much staying in place? I didn't really jump around. Okay, so here's a bad example where you jump 
jump around a lot. So here is chord one. And here is chord four. And then here's one B. And then here's chord four. And then here's chord one again. Yeah, so like, I don't know about you, but that bad example was just all over the place. It's very distracting. So I highly suggest keeping your voicings very much within the same place. Stay very still in your music. Don't jump around in your um, your registers or your pitch range very much. And one great tip to use this will be the everlasting one and five. So this is a term that I coined. Basically, it's like for most songs, if you have identified the key, you know what's the one, you know what's the five. And in this case, I am using all C major. So the one and the five will be C and G. So the cool thing is you could actually use like play the C and the G um, most of the time and it's all going to sound really good which also makes your music nice and your voicings nice and still you're not moving up too much or down too much because you're usually only at the one or the five you're holding in that kind of a voicing most of the time and if you want to know more about Everlasting 1 and 5 that entire course is also available inside the Inspire Keys Academy so here is an example of how I'll use Everlasting 1 and 5 hand's just staying put a lot of C's and G's my left hand is moving because the bass notes change but they sound really good together when your right hand stays still and in this case it's a classic example of less is more uh, I also forgot to mention that if you want to see exactly what notes I play and see the notes notated onto music staves in treble and bass claps that is available from uh, my laptop recording, it's recording the screen, every single thing I play is inside the Inspire Keys Academy um, under the specific notes and views section. So now I'm going to move straight along to... Um, Okay, regarding keeping your voicings constant, it's okay to move a little bit, but I will suggest stepwise movements. So stepwise movements just means instead of jumping around a lot, you can move by one or one step most of the time. Yeah. So like I will suggest having chord progressions like that. that I've used that sort of move just one step away from each other instead of jumping uh, to maybe a third or a fourth or a fifth interval. So most of the chords and notes within, they just move one step away from each other. So something to do the next time you play altar calls, guys, is try to see if, how you can link from one chord to the next in steps instead of in jumps. Okay, now I'm going to move straight along to the third point, which is don't play chords that are too dark and in music theory principles dark chords are created from minor harmonies so usually in worship we just use chords one two three four five or six the major chords being one four five the minor chords being two three six and all of these are also taught within the inspired keys academy in the course section so <coughs> If you were to pick a lot of minor chords, like two or three or six, what you might get is it's a very, very dark atmosphere. And the thing about worship in an altar call setting is I feel that you've got to give people a sense of hope and a sense of uh, God's joy and just wonderful love and if everything is just too dark with a lot of minor harmonies I personally feel like it just creates a bit of a depressing kind of atmosphere so I would personally deviate away from a chord progression like this <coughs> Chords 4, 
and six and sometimes a five to link them. But I feel like there's just too much four and six going on and it keeps resolving to a minor chord. But if I were to do that, I'd rather resolve it to a major chord eventually. So I would prefer if it was something like this chord progression where it's a six. There is a six, which is a minor chord, but there is, it then leads to a five B, which is a five first inversion, and then a one, and then a four. So there are three major chords to kind of balance out the minor chord. So something like, and this is chord progression four that I will be sharing later on. And if you forget what I say, just refer to the handout that's also available for free at the link below. And this is the chord progression six. prefer that um, if you were to use a minor chord, be sure to resolve it into a major. Uh, don't go too much into the minor because if not, everything just sounds a bit too dark and too heavy and sad and depressing. So guys, now I am about to go into my four recommended chord progressions just in case you don't know what to play. Now, what usually happens is you um, you have like maybe four songs that you sing in a worship set at the start of the service. And then for the altar call, typically, but not always, um, one of the songs that was sung earlier in the worship set, typically the third or the fourth song, something a bit slower paced, will be used as the altar call song. Sometimes it's a brand new song, maybe the song, song number five that's not within the worship set the four songs in the set. Um, so you usually would have the whole band come up and play it. But if in your church, maybe one time it's like an un unannounced altar call, you never planned for it, suddenly you're told, okay, uh, keyboardist, I need you to come up and play it, and you're completely unprepared, then these are the four chord progressions that I recommend. And once again, I, I do write them down inside the handout. So go get the handout if you forget what it is they are. Um, and here it is. Now, before I go on, I do want to remind you that only for people who are watching this live and if you watch the replay within a short time from the replay, there is a two day discount code, $100 off the Inspired Keys Academy annual membership. So this is for you people out there, you're committed, you want to work on your worship keys standards, um, and you want to work on it for the whole of the next year, you've committed your life to it, then that's for you. I want to honor you and I want to reward you with $100 off and it's only for today and tomorrow. It expires at the end of tomorrow, Sunday, 13th of May. Mother's Day. So don't miss it. And the discount code is Alter Call. That's A L T A R C A L L, one word. So links and details are below. Let's get straight on to the four chord progressions. So here's chord progression one, and it is chord one, four C, which is chord four, second inversion, one, four C. And basically, it's two chords on repeat, but I like to define everything in the form of four chord phrases. So one, four C, one, four C. So one is this, four C is actually this, but because I think that's a bit of a very uh, classical voicing, I would typically use like a different voicing like this.
can try and change around the inversions of the chord. So you don't want to introduce a new chord, but if because it's primarily chords one and four, you could change the chord one from root position to first inversion so that it creates a little bit of a harmonic interest, but it's still within the boundaries of chords one and four. And guys, as I demonstrate, and if you feel like you're really curious about what I did and you want to see exactly what notes I play, that video is available inside the Inspired Keys Academy. It shows you exactly what notes I play and the notes notated on music staves in treble and bass clef. So one I'm going to now introduce chord progression two which is um, a possible favorite of one one B and four so it's a lot of combinations of all these ones and fours but I think this sounds really nice so here's a one to chord progression three, which is one, four, one, B, and four. So one, four, one, B, four. So here's one. I decided okay I'm pretty done with this range I went an octave lower for my right hand and it just created like a new realm going down um, an octave and creating this brand new kind of voicing and yeah I really like that it's the same thing I'm doing but I'm doing it 
a little bit differently. I also don't know if you realize, but sometimes because it's been a lot of long held cords and that gets a bit boring, sometimes I sneak in a little bit of a pattern within with a bit of repeated notes. So something like... on the G or on the C. Doing that for the everlasting 1 and 5 notes are always quite safe. And finally, I'm going on to chord progression 4, which is 6, 5B, 1, and 4. So here we go, 6. I just like the way that sounds. And I had a B on the top line to have that passing chord, passing note all the way up to C. And a 4 to finish. So I really hope that you got some ideas from this video, guys. This is really going to be helpful if you play also call and you have no idea what to play and you're kind of just hmm, there's no real song that we agreed on to play for also call and you're not really sure what to do now one thing about these chord progressions is these are just my suggestions and as you also notice I I think a lot of ones and fours are great and even inversions off. Like I used one, one B and one C. I used four, four B and four C. So these are all awesome. Now, if there's anything you don't understand about what I mean from the terms like B and Cs, um, these are just the British music theory ways of um, describing chord progressions, uh, inversions. So. Um, one on its own is the root position, B is the first inversion, and C is the second inversion. And if you don't understand, just type it into the comments and I'll see if I can create a video teaching about just this topic if enough people ask me about it. But go ahead and try any chord progression that you wish and just explore and, and try it at home and see if you can come up with a sound that you really like. And um, I also want to thank Inspired Keys Academy David Wetrich because he's the one who asked me to uh, come up with something about altar call because he uses uh, plays on the altar call very frequently and sometimes he doesn't know what to do with it. So I really hope that this video gives him, gives David and everybody watching some great ideas to play around with. Now before I take any questions or uh, give shout outs to people who left messages in the chat, I do want 
want to remind you that there is a super time sensitive discount. It is a hundred dollars off the Inspired Keys Academy annual membership and I'm only doing this this weekend. So if you watch as a live attendee right now or if you're watching a re the replay within the first I think 24 hours or 48 hours, I'm not sure what time it is based on your time zone, but it expires at the end of Sunday the 13th of May. So guys, use the discount code. It is Alter Call, A-L-T-A-R-C-A-L-L. -L. Go get that Inspired Keys Academy yearly membership for a hundred bucks off. And now I am going to see if anybody left any comments. Um, there are some of us watching, so nobody has left any questions in the chat. Um, so you know what, guys? That's absolutely fine. I will see you in the next YouTube Live video. Um, I am curious about which is a good day that I can do this. I want to make sure that it's a day that most people can attend. So if you're watching this, um, I want you to just type into the comments below or the chat and let me know what's a good time for you to watch a YouTube Live video? What's a good time? Because I don't want it to be at like your 3 a.m. Uh, or 6 a.m. You know, none of these work really well, but um, th I do have an international audience, so I want to make sure I cater to as many people as possible. Let me know in the comments below what uh, preferences you are when it comes to watching these live videos. And also, let's have a look here. I have uh, Rodney Stewart saying, great advice, nice sounding. I think a keyboard with a slider is essential at times. It gives you the control of deciding what instrument to use at what time. Um, pretty much ever since I've used uh, main stage and connecting it to a keyboard with sliders, I've never gone back just because there's just so much more control that you have with the sound that you produce. Okay guys, if there are no further questions, I will chat with you further in the comments below and remember to get that discount code 100 bucks off. Alter call is the discount code, details in the description below and I'll see you in the next YouTube live video and in upcoming videos as well. Take care and God bless.